Live from Cambridge, Massachusetts, it's The Cube at the MIT Chief Data Officer and Information Quality Symposium. With hosts Dave Vellante and Jeff Kelly. Welcome back to Cambridge, everybody. Dave Vellante here with Jeff Kelly of Wikibon. This is SiliconANGLE's The Cube. The Cube is our live mobile studio. We go out to the events, we extract the signal from the noise. We're here at the MIT Information Quality Symposium. It's the Chief Data Officer Forum, probably the foremost a form of its kind, and uh, leading thinkers are here. Eugene Kolker is here. Uh, he's a PhD and the chief data officer at Seattle's Children, Ch Seattle Children's Hospital. Welcome to theCUBE. Thanks for coming on, Eugene. Thank you for inviting me. So, the role of the CDO has emerged, um, in some cases, you know, like gangbusters, particularly in industries like, like yours. Um, but I wonder if you could talk about how you became the CDO and how that role emerged at Seattle Children's. Um, yeah, so we started seven and a half years ago, and it was quite um, mm, uh, surprising for me. I got called and was invited to talk about uh, um, what Seattle Children's is planning to do in the next five to ten years with regard to data. And the idea was that um, um, we're planning to treat data as strategic institutional asset. And to do that, you need to have somebody who's going to be responsible for this kind of activity. And uh, we at Seattle Children's, um, and me personally, we believe that sharing best practices and uh, sharing our uh, lessons learned would be great for, um, um, important for other people in order to prevent them making the same mistakes we made and hopefully improve what they do and how. So um, one of the key, um, important messages we're trying to get across in our entire organization is that um, uh, decision can be made not only based on gut feelings, but also be data driven. And in many cases, those decisions, um, either strategic or business or operational, uh, they could be um, better decisions just because they're based on data. And we're trying our best to um, to make that um, reality on everyday basis or for major strategic decisions. We um, um, tried you know, a, a lot of interesting approaches how to do it. And um, some interesting uh, lessons we learned, I'd say they're coming back to something which most people would say it's so obvious, you, know, you don't need to be PhD to get to that point. Uh, but uh, the deal is that uh, data, information, technologies, approaches are extremely important. But the most important of all this uh, are, of course, people. Because whatever you do with your analytics, with your approaches, with your methods, you need to make it actionable. Those insights should be actionable. You should have shared vision that people can act on that and make real impact. Our uh, goal is to improve care for our patients and families. And uh, it's not, not trivial in healthcare. Uh, it's mm. extremely complicated. It's unique in many senses and many issues. Uh, it has a lot of similarities, though, with other industries through when this, through similar transformation healthcare is going through right now. Uh, point would be that uh, in addition to doing proper um, data science, uh, analytics, analysis, you need to be able to communicate it properly, to make it um, um, working for other people to act on. And that's the key driver of what we're trying to do. So, you mentioned gut feel before. There was, a, there was an article in the early 2000s in the Harvard Business Review about how gut feel trumped um, technologies and, 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 and other you know, approaches that people were using. You know, they had big data warehouses at the time. And, and then a number of people tried to build mathematical models and, and, and sampling and, and the like. Um, and now, sampling's almost disappeared, right? You have all this data, so the technology has evolved greatly. You're saying technology is only one piece of the equation, it's people, and I'm sure process fits in there as well. But the technology has evolved very rapidly. So have, how have, my question is how have the the, the people side, or even the process side, has it evolved as, as rapidly? Or is that the bottleneck? Um, I'd say that people side is um, 
always would be bottleneck, challenge, and also opportunity. Mm -hmm. As we heard in one of the recent presentations earlier today, that you know, uh, sometimes you don't need big data, you need smart data. You'd like to, to have better decision based on data. And it could be done on everyday basis or could be done strategically. And uh, I think that the uh, issue of how to to work with people um, who are not the data challenged like some of us, okay? To understand what we do, how we do, to um, uh, for them to believe, trust in our data stories. We call them data stories, okay? Um, this is extremely important. Uh, this is not uh, done for people who are technology-based. It's usually done for people who develop software or uh, statistical analytics approaches. But this is um, part of where best business practices, consulting practices are extremely important. You know, marketing, communication is extremely important. And we're trying to learn um, how to do it. And we, um, we've made some major progress along so, those lines. So you're a data guy, but you're a storyteller as well, you're saying? Actually, you have to be storyteller. Otherwise, you know, you're going to be somewhere and people are going to be in another place and it's not going to be actionable. You're not going to make real impact, not real, you know, improvement of care of patients and families. So tell us a data story. Um, so, you know, in healthcare, like in other um, industries, you have, you know, um, long-term beliefs and uh, um, thinking about uh, uh, important issues that people not even question, okay? Uh, just one story, um, uh, you have... Um, the world is flat. Yes, yeah, so something like that. So, uh, you know, nurses, right? It's very important, you know, in our place, which is approximately less than two billion a year enterprise, five and a half thousand employees, a quarter of those are nurses. Nurses are so important to work with patients and families. So um, uh, when we sometimes see um, signs of uh, you know um, good nurses you know um, um, experienced nurses you know leaving our place, we really worry about that. So we, we want to understand what's happening. There's some beliefs that people not even question. For example, if you have hospital, just very simple, hospital inside city, um, all conditions equal, you better hire a nurse which lives in the city versus the one who lives in suburbia. Obviously, right? Uh, this person going to run, you know, using bus, go to the place, and, and that's basically for longevity. Big commutes yes, the Yes, exactly. To, don't need to, to fight traffic. The yeah. whole deal, right? right? No, that's completely wrong. <laughs> and then the, the real issue is that those nurses, primarily it's, it, it's women, uh, who live in suburbia, they have larger families, more kids, um, higher mortgages, uh, they need stable jobs, right? And they need to be able to um, kind of adjust their lives around family too, right? So for long-term uh, longevity for all those, you know, it's better to have something, you know, if they like it and they experience they're good, so they would be valued on market, they, they prefer to, to stick with good place, right? Those nurses who live in city instead, if they don't like something, they're gonna change bus. This is long-term belief in More our risk industry. More risk-takers, right? Exactly, okay. And, you had, and, and, and your they, data showed that. And we showed that you know, very explicitly. It was eye-opener for us, for many people in our place. It was eye-opener for many people outside of our place. What we learned that other people also came to that kind of conclusion. Uh, sometimes we're good at sharing. Those people, uh, we are not so good, so we were not, uh, we basically kind of learn it by ourselves. Mm. But this is, you know, a very simple example of those stories, right? And uh, um, I can give you stories and stories like that. <laughs> That's great. So, so the, the importance of stories like that, and first, let me back up and say my wife's a nurse. Yeah, I can very much relate to everything you just said. Um, <laughs> and we do live out in suburbia, and she worked here in the city. Um, but talk about the importance of stories. So, so the, the ability to articulate and tell a story like that is, is what's the main purpose? To sway uh, stakeholders into taking certain actions, into adopting new ways of doing business? Um, is that really really the goal of, of, of storytelling when it relates to data? You know, I think there are multiple goals always, right? So in, in the you know, first approximation of reality for this specific project you're working on, right? You need to have not only stakeholders, but engage uh, uh, stakeholders. Mm -hmm. um, uh, and those who are going to act on whatever you're going to be working with them. Uh, 
and delivering whatever uh, data uh, stories, right? Together with them. In order for them to believe in those, because they were part of the whole story, not telling, but producing this story, producing this analysis. Mm. That's extremely important. It's very different if you, you know, get your, you know, whatever problem and uh, you're trying to do it in the corner. So there's data nerds, right? And you come back with solution and, you know, you, you lost everybody, right? So that's like on, on surface level. Strategically, long term, of course, you would like to have more people engaged with these kind of activities. So they would have... Um, they would become um, smarter users of data. Mm -hmm. So they would become um, advocates of what you do, and they would basically uh, engage in these kind of activities and tell uh, their coworkers, this is fantastic capability, we can do it together. This is not black box, like you know, most time we, we feel like mm -hmm. it is, okay? And actually those people, maybe data nerds, but maybe they're also data docs, doctors. So they help us and we help each other together to achieve again, improve mm -hmm. you know, um, care for patients and families. This is our ultimate goal. So if I understand what you're saying correctly, really the idea here is not to have you know, maybe this great little collection or group of data scientists who go off in a corner and they come up with these great insights and then they just you know, they tell a CEO or they tell a C-level executive and that person says to the organization, you're going to do it this way from now on. It's get those stakeholders who are actually going to have to affect change and allow them to actually help solve the problem using data. Yes, you're absolutely right. And you know, one of the another you know uh, clear examples how it working or not working is a standard you know A/B comparison mm -hmm. or buy versus build. You know, another story I can tell you. Um, and and we've done it wrong way and we've done it right right way. So uh, failed project basically was similar with uh, successful projects with regard to major components. We thought data science analytics and actionable insights both were of high quality. Uh, on failed project, we had too many insights, but we didn't worry about that, okay? Uh, that was very wrong, okay? Why? Because it turned out to be that um, the process was not really well defined, okay, um, in, in failed. So it was well defined in success project, okay? Uh, customers were identified, but, you know, in failed project, we were unable to transform concerned stakeholders into key, clear, you know, customers. Mm -hmm. And then I would say most important issue with regard to core question, core issue, we were unable to transform this, I'd say, free floating anxiety into something which is, you know, testable uh, and, uh, you know, actionable. So as a result of it, there was no shared, you know, vision. Expectations were all over the map in failed project versus, you know, fully well articulated vision, which is actionable mm -hmm. for success project. And then this kind of um, issue, uh, after issue, it's, it's, it's built on communication, our ability to communicate properly through entire process with mm. transparency, engagement of our uh, customers versus not. And of course, great data science is, is important. You know, technology is important. You know, approaches are important. This is all important. But um, you need to have shared vision. You need to have actionable uh, insights behind this shared vision. And you have to have it done with best business practices, best you know, approaches to communicate with people, including marketing, including um, um, uh, your data storytelling capabilities. So in our case, in our team, it's not just about data scientists. We have a business person program manager. We have somebody who help us with writing. So, so, and we are uh, engaging from the very beginning, trying to get well-defined project initiatives, clear customers, and identified core questions from the get-go that everybody on the same page. Whether we work within somebody within walls or outside vendor, uh, it's we treat them equally as collaborators, co-workers. So that helps. So Eugene, you're on a panel tomorrow, uh, how to establish the CDO function within your organization. I want, before we get into the sort of how to do that, I've been sort of taking notes. You've got to be a storyteller. You're a data guy. Um, you've got to be a good communicator. You've got to at least have that function in your organization. Do I have to be a data person to, to succeed at being a CDO, or can I just have an appreciation for data and bring in skill sets? What are your thoughts on that? What are the attributes of a, of a successful CDO? Um, 
I'm not sure, um, and I think it depends on different industries actually. There are a lot of similarities, but if you're talking about um, companies like Amazon and Google, it could be different from somebody who is working in you know small bank or um, in the advertising agency, right? I think you need to have, um, you know, there are some you know, standard skill sets. You need to understand data. You need to understand analytics, data science. You have to do that. Mm -hmm. um, you need to understand how to communicate with people. You need to know your industry too. Um, otherwise, there are going to be a lot of misalignments. And um, we learned it hard way as well. Okay, when we came aboard, we did know a lot about healthcare. We came. We were coming from completely research by medical research right. angle, and uh, mm, you cannot buy that. You need to have this experience. You know, it takes you know years to, to get that one. Um, so I'd say you need to to have you know an ideal case, an optimal case, um, all these different capabilities, and uh, um, have that also projected into your team. And you need to to like working with people. Otherwise, you know. You're going to be sitting in the corner, and successes would be very rare. Now, you, to whom do you report within the organization? So, um, uh, I report to president of research, and uh, indirectly to CEO. But what we figured out, uh, what's really, in addition to that important, you know, reporting schema, uh, we also figured out um, uh, optimal for uh, our uh, organization. Uh, system how we're going to work with both business and side and IT side. So we, in our organization, any major project or initiative goes through executive sponsors. Mm -hmm. So we work primarily with um, on business side with our uh, business clinical leader, which is medical director. Um, and uh, um, on IT side, we work with CIO. That helps a lot because we, we get the uh, best of the both worlds, right? right? And as any healthcare organization, it's extremely complex. So you need to have your business driver and uh, your IT driver working with you closely. Um, then you're going to be um, successful. Um, otherwise, it's going to be more complicated, uh, more convoluted. You're going to limit yourself. So, so, so these, obviously you're separate from the, the, the CIO. Who does the CIO report to? Uh, to uh, CEO. Okay, so you have sort of a dotted line to the CEO, yes, right? Yes, yes, So there's some alignment of your roles yes. through the CEO. And then you talked about projects. Um, how does that work? Do you work through a PMO, or do you actually own projects? The, 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 yeah. are, there, are there data projects that you yes. have full so, responsibility for? So basically, we have an entire process how we're going to work on project or not. Okay, mm -hmm. and our executive sponsors, you know, they work with us, you know, and um, they're decision makers if we're going to take on it or not. We also need to agree and be able to do it, right? So um, the process includes, I would say, best business practices. You know, first, you know, we kind of have, you know, a step of identification and qualification. If this process is gonna be um, qualified for what we can uh, deliver, okay? If that's checked, if that's okay, by our executive sponsors and uh, stakeholders, we go to next stage, which is confirmation stage. And then, you know, we do a lot of due diligence and work with, you know, people to on it to uh, define it very clearly. Okay. Next stage, we're going to planning, right? And again, on each and every step, we do communication transparent with um, uh, customers, with exec sponsors, with you know everybody uh, uh, relevant, you know, um, to this uh, specific project or initiative. Then we go to implementation stage. Um, uh, I'm not telling you anything new. It's yeah, just it's best classic business PDIM, classic. right? Exactly, <laughs> exactly. And the, and then that next one is of course measurements, mm -hmm. right? And documentation and reporting. So, but um, uh, I would say one of the major lessons we learned: you cannot do it um, solo. You cannot do it by yourself. Even if you have like Uber key sponsors, you need to have your uh, stakeholders and make them uh, your customers, advocates, and work with them all along the way because um, that way your data stories are going to be trustable, believable, and people would like to act on them. How big is your organization? 
um, organization is you know is um, less than two billion a year. And specifically, ah, the CEO. Sorry, 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 yeah, yeah, okay, yeah. Sorry, so we have um, dozen to um, dozen and a half people of different uh, expertise. Um, we have people who are data scientists. Mm -hmm. um, we have software folks. We have informatics folks. We also have again program manager, business person, somebody who is our technical writer. So we're trying to blend these capabilities. And uh, who's the communicator? You? That's um, your job, or um, some? You, you know, we tr we, we're trying to, to actually, uh, depending on who is lead on this project, mm -hmm. to work it in team on team level, not only on my level. So it's going to be great for everybody who is participating in those projects. But who's your PR person? Is that you, um, or is that um, do you have a particular you know head of comms within your group? Or are so you so we work we work yeah. with consultants, uh -huh. and they help us to um, to communicate our messages better too. And I can tell you, we're trying to. Um, to uh, engage with people like internal consultants. Mm. And, uh, mm. and right now we're at the point that we're ready to share those expertise and, and lessons learned with people outside too. Because we think that improving care for patients, family, and, you know, nationwide or worldwide is extremely important. And some lessons uh, uh, we'd like people to, to get from us, not to make their own mistakes. Right. All right, Eugene, we'll leave it there. Thanks very much for coming on theCUBE and sharing your stories and congratulations on your success and good luck going forward. Thank you very much. All right, Thank keep you. it right there, everybody. Jeff Kelly and I will be back. Paul Gillen is also here, and we'll be doing some of the hosting. We're at the MIT Chief Information, or Chief Data Officer, CDO, MIT IQ, hashtag MIT IQ on Twitter. This is theCUBE, we'll be right back, right after this.